I don't see this summit being a, a conclusive summit. After all, it's the 19th summit we've had here in Brussels since 2009. Already there is speculation about the need for another summit in July. Now, Mr. Herman van Rompuy, who is the permanent president of the European Council, has put a plan forward. He wants a common European treasury. Uh, he wants, basically, he wants the European Union to become a debt union. Um, and whilst that may be acceptable to some of the southern countries who are effectively bust, uh, to the northern countries it's not. The focus always is on Germany. You know, will Merkel blink or not? But actually, the truth of it is that the Finns and the Dutch feel the same. So we, st we will stagger on after this conference, I think, without much conclusion at all. Uh, so whatever happens here, of course it matters to the UK. Uh, but what mystifies me is that the UK government, led by David Cameron, are actually urging the rest of the European Union to push on to a full fiscal union, to a full political union, indeed to a union that will be utterly dominated by Germany. And, and, and that is something that goes against four centuries of British foreign policy. We've always tried to make sure that one country would not be too dominant in Europe and now we appear to be encouraging it, which I find very odd indeed. Look, the Eurozone is a fundamental misconstruction between economies that are so different an economic and monetary union between them was never going to work. The only way forward for Greece, Spain and Portugal and such countries is to recognise that the euro is a mistake, to break away from it, to get their own currencies back, to have a competitive devaluation and to get their own democracies back. That is the only way forward. What we're doing here, if we keep propping up the euro, if we keep trying to find ways of preserving and reinforcing failure, what we're doing is guaranteeing a miserable future, not just for the tens of millions of people who will be forced below the poverty line, but actually we may pay a very heavy social cost for this too in terms of insurrection and violence. And actually, what we've got here, I think, is an unbridgeable gulf between the culture of Northern Europe and the culture of Southern Europe. And what we do at these summits, and remember, this is summit number 19, since 2009, all we do, all we do is kick the can down the road. There's already talk of another summit in July. We reach no conclusions. The markets increasingly lose confidence, and who can blame them? Um, and, and now we see Spanish 10-year debt, Italian 10-year debt hovering around this sort of critical 7% level. Um, and the whole thing is headed for a gigantic bust. Well, remember, there are 17 countries that have mistakenly joined this Eurozone. So far, five of them have been bailed out. Nearly a third of them have needed bailing out. Um, but the Spanish bailout was perhaps only a fraction of what is genuinely needed. If the Italian bailout comes, there is not enough money in Europe to bail out Italy, which has the third highest level of debt in the world, exceeding two trillion. Uh, the policymakers, uh, the people really in charge of this, appear to be blinded to the whole thing. Uh, I mean, Mr. Barroso at G20 in Washington just last week um, appeared to be living on a different planet. You know, you can only go on kicking the can down the road for so long. I believe there is a very real and genuine risk that over the course of this summer, the markets will overwhelm the whole of the European system. When Van Rompuy talks about political, uh, uh, democratic support for political union, um, it's laughable. He doesn't mean it. They treat democracy here with absolute contempt. The European Union as it is, is not undemocratic, it's actually fundamentally anti-democratic. They're trying to get 27 member states to give up the ability through general elections and through having new presidents of new prime ministers from deciding their own budgetary rules. Uh, these are very, very bad, dangerous people. They're the worst people we've seen in Europe since 1945. Now, when you say to a country that's just picked up a huge 20-year bill, could you please pick up a bill for Greece, Portugal, Ireland, Spain, and possibly even Italy? Oh, and by the way, your commitment to this is indefinite. Is it any wonder that ordinary German folk are saying, we just want no part of this. And I think what's really interesting is there is a reawakening in Germany of a sense of German identity. You know, you've got to remember that history hangs very heavily over the German people. Their sense of guilt for what happened in World War II 
has dominated that country's international relations ever since 1945. But there is a younger generation growing up who do not feel the guilt in quite the same way that their parents or grandparents did. And they are saying, we want to be a modern democratic country that's nice to people. Uh, we're happy to be cooperative across Europe, but we are not going to be the mugs of this game. We are not going to go on bailing out failing southern European countries who frankly should never have joined this Eurozone in the first place. And Angela Merkel, who is no fool and who is a very astute politician, knows that. If you take away from people their right to determine their own futures, to live under their own rules, to take away from them their nationality, uh, then you risk doing something that we stupidly did back in 1920 with Yugoslavia where we took diverse different Balkan states, we forced them together against their will under a new identity, and you and I both know since 1990 of the awful things that have happened as those countries have fought to get back their independence, self-determination, democracy, and freedom. We mustn't allow the European Union to make those same mistakes.